Hi, my name is Rochelle Smith, entrepreneur, professional speaker, and author. Wanted to continue this conversation on the importance of confidence, and this time, wanted to share my thoughts on the importance of confidence in your career. And you say, now Rochelle, confidence and career, okay, so do you mean I need to be confident in my job in order to perform better? Absolutely. But this time, I wanted to take more of a macro level view and talk about how confidence is so important to your career choice, in particular, your career choice. Because as you've heard me state in prior episodes, I spent three years, 2012 to 2015, as a member of the Detroit Society for HR Management. If there's something that goes through the minds of HR personnel constantly around the world, throughout each and every day, is what can we do to engage our employees more? Because as you've heard me state, you know, anywhere from, from 70 to 90% of people um, are disengaged in the workplace. So what does that mean? They're showing up. They're doing whatever they need to do to keep their job. They don't want to get fired. They want the paycheck, but they're not engaged. They're not thinking long term. They're not giving 150%. And so, of course, that has huge impact on bottom lines of companies, organizations, even nonprofits. Um, when you've got people whose heart truly isn't in it, I mean, that is going to impact your organization no matter what type it is. If it's a for if the Fortune 100 company, all the way to a three-person business here in Metro Detroit. It does not matter. And so I want to challenge you all in, in, in how confidence relates to particularly your career is career choice in terms of the careers that you choose to pursue need to be based on a sense of authenticity. I've covered authenticity in prior episodes. I'm going to continue to highlight it in 2018 and beyond because it's so important. Because why are so many, in my personal opinion, why do we have so many people that are disengaged in the workplace? Regardless of industry, regardless of field, regardless of profession, why? Because you have people that aren't in the right positions. You have people, their hearts aren't in it. It's not a good fit. They just simply want the money or the paycheck. Uh, it, it's just a way to, to, to professionally kind of kill time and pass time and, and before they can get their next gig, whatever the case may be. And so we've got to be confident enough to, to from a from a sense of authenticity to say this is me and this is not me and recognize folks I know it's not going to be an easy decision because when I think about my own career journey I speak from personal experience as always my career journey has not been linear my career journey has been like this <laughs> I mean it's been like the plot of a movie it has been there's had some twists and turns the plot has deepened i mean it deepened and i mean it's just been incredible when i think about my own career journey um and and, and but what it really 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 came down to is my purpose and that's why i stepped out you know and left the corporate world um, and said you know i could spend the next however many years trying to fulfill society's expectations of what success looks like and all of that um, but or I can pursue my life purpose and I, and I recognize that it's not an easy decision That's actually a decision that most people never take most people will just continue on You know punching the clock punching time cards um, Doing whatever they have to do and that's fine and I understand that because it's you know stepping out um, Kind of like I have is not an easy task and I, and I don't recommend it You know unless you've got a lot of confidence unless you've got you know, you got to believe in yourself. I mean, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur and be your own boss. But folks, if you don't have confidence, if you, if you struggle with a fear of the future, a fear of the unknown, I mean, it will be a nightmare for you. So from a point of authenticity, don't look around and say, well, I have so-and-so has it. My cousin has a big house and they have this career. So they're a lawyer. So I want to be a lawyer. Or you know what? My uncle is a doctor and he's so rich. Yeah, I want to be a doctor. I mean, you hear this stuff, particularly when you ask little kids. And yes, when you're young, you don't know. You're basically just kind of picking careers based on what you saw people on TV or your, your favorite actor and what role they may play or some type of relative or friend or strangers or people in other neighborhoods that you admire based on their wealth or what they have. You know, it's not based on a spirit of authenticity, but I would argue that yes, Children have that type of mindset because they haven't been exposed and they're young and they don't know the realities of what it takes to obtain and achieve certain levels of career success and, and professional success. But are you, I would also argue that most adults still have that mindset. You know, I'm only doing this because it pays a lot. I'm only doing this because it's prestigious. I'm only doing this because everyone respects me in this role. And if I were to lead this role and, and pursue perhaps even, I wanted, always wanted to be a history teacher since I was a young boy. And so for them to pursue that, they're going to have to leave a lot of stuff behind. They're going to have to leave that quote-unquote 
quote unquote prestige, the image, the money, all of that. Does that happen? Absolutely. There are there are certainly people that that just follow their heart, that that are truly intent on being authentic and real and pursuing your life's goals based on their purpose, their missions, their passions, their values. But that that number is very small, and most people aren't like that. And so, but I want to challenge you today that to really think about if you if you dread going to work every week, if you if you dread Mondays, if you just love, just look forward to get so excited when it's time to come home from work, I challenge you. I mean, you already know why. I don't even need to challenge you to ask yourself why. You already know why. You already know the answer. Um, the answer that I'm always going to ask you is, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to spend 2018 doing the same thing, expecting the same results? Because Einstein defined that as insanity. And I say that respectfully. I mean, we've all been there. We've all been just kind of doing, doing the same thing over and over again, just hoping for a change, hoping for some big breakthrough when the breakthrough starts with us and making a decision to, to change, to go in a different direction, to do whatever we need to do to turn the situation around. But what I'm telling you today is that you need to value yourself more than feeling like you just got to go in and take any old job and, and just do it for the wrong reasons. That's not fair for you, but that's also not fair for your employer. If your heart's not in it, if you're dreading going to work every day, if you're just unhappy, that's unfair. You have to put yourself in your employer's position and say, how fair is this? You know, is this fair? We're paying this person this money and this benefits, whatever the case may be, and they really don't want to be here. All right, that's not fair. If the roles were reversed, if you were in your boss's position or an HR position or a human resource role position, how would you feel? You know, and so that's why this whole, these all these concepts I bring to light here on these episodes are interrelated. Truth telling authenticity, confidence, courage, not competing, okay? Com competition is a huge reason why so many people are unhappy in the workplace. Why? Because so-and-so graduated from so-and-so college and their, their best friend in that college has, has advanced in his or her career at this rate, so then their best friend feels that they also need to keep up. All right, keeping up with the Joneses is huge in the professional world. You got a whole lot of people just trying to compete with other people and don't care one way or the other, what happens to their current company or employer, business, nonprofit organization, and that's not fair. Folks, we got to be real. And I and I posted here a couple weeks ago that fantastic article about Elena Griffin, the 91-year-old from Berkeley, from Berkeley, California. She she has been employed at Sutter, that, that hospital there, medical system, uh, for 71 years. She is currently 91 years old and said the only way she's going to stop working there is when they carry her out in a box. Think about that. Think about that level of passion and commitment. She's a patient relations coordinator, loves what she does. And so the question I ask for you is, could you say the same about your job? Do you feel that way about your career? You know, do you love it so much that you could work there forever? Okay, that's what you deserve. You deserve to be as happy as Elena Griffin at 91 years old, still going in, working her tail off um, in Berkeley, California for that for that medical system and I think that is fantastic but there's so many people again some, some deep down emotional issues don't feel like they deserve to be happy in the workplace and relationships in any aspect of life so if that's how you feel I challenge you to actually kind of you know get some help to, to resolve those issues so you can go on to live the best life you can live and just recognize that you deserve to be happy you got to value yourself you got to recognize you spend so much time working why spend it unhappy why spend it unhappy all right, so the, the time is now, and I wanted to, to make a quick note here for college students. Oh no, I, I spent 16 years mentoring college students, love college students, and so, but what I wanna say to college students is recognize, folks, you're young, you're discovering yourselves, you're trying to figure out who you are and what your values are, and what your purpose is, all of that. So recognize as a college student, yes, there are some college students who, who are focused, who know, who have a vision for their lives, and they go on to successfully fulfill that vision based on their college experience and what they what they mapped out in the college level um, during those years. But also recognize college is a very transitional period. So you're trying to figure out who you are, all of this and that. So your, your identity is, is not, in, in most cases, has not been solidified. So there's going to be some trial and some error and some different career choices and things like that till you figure your till you figure out your life and figure out exactly who you are and what it's going to take to to achieve your goals. Now, so recognize if you're if you're if you're an 18 year old college student, I don't want you feeling like oh I got to have everything figured out and this and that. No, 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 you don't because when I mean, you look at my own career direct trajectory, what I started out you know as a major in college is very different from what I'm doing now. But the, the seeds were sown for me as a seven year old, um, speaking. 
at the Greater Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church in Gulfport, Mississippi. So I've been speaking since I was seven years old, been writing for years. So the seeds were always there, but I had different career choices that I recognize now have prepared me for what I'm doing now. Because no one's born qualified. It takes some time, uh, particularly when you have a, a role like mine to impact, to inspire lots of people. All right, so there's some leadership skills that have to be developed, some influence abilities that have to be developed. In my case, were developed in sales. But so recognize, you know, I, I when I was a, getting my second graduate degree at Northwestern University, and I'll close with this, my dream, I was going to be this big marketing person, this big VP, senior VP of a top marketing company. It was at Northwestern, got my first you know, job right out of Northwestern at General Mills in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So it started out in one of the top five marketing companies in the world. And absolutely, with all due respect to General Mills, wonderful company. They do a lot for their people, a lot of good for the community. Um, absolutely hated it. Absolutely hated it. All right, but I could have stayed in that position saying, well, society says this is a top marketing company and I need to be here. I need to do whatever I need to do and sacrifice to, to fulfill some societal expectations, whatever. Folks, I got out of Minneapolis. I got out of there as soon as I could and actually moved to Detroit. I was in sales and absolutely loved it, calling on physicians and hospitals and things like that here all over Metro, really Southeast Michigan. I had a, different territories for different companies, but fantastic career. But those, But that prepared me. But so see, that was a pivotal point in my life where do I just continue on this career track? Yes, I spent a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort focusing on this, preparing for this particular career track in marketing. Or do I go into sales, which ironically they had, um, you know, a lot of companies perform psychology tests and things like that, personality assessments when new employees come on board. And when I came on board, Dr. Bob Bender, who was their guy, had been doing that for, you know, a psychologist had been doing that for General Mills for what, 20, 21 years, doing personality profiles and assessments and, and recognizing if this is this role is a good match for this person. And he told me, folks, Rochelle, I've been doing this for 20 plus years for General Mills. You need to be in sales. And what did I tell him? I'm saying, dude, I didn't spend all this money to be in marketing. I went to Northwestern and marketing is it. But he told me, he told me you need to be in sales. Got in sales, absolutely loved it. But even that experience, even those years, I wouldn't take one, I would not trade going to Northwestern University for anything in the world. I mean, that just was a life transforming experience and continues to be um, as an alum. So that's certainly something I wouldn't do differently, but just recognize folks, you have a choice. You have a choice to make regarding your career and it's gonna take confidence to choose to be authentic in your career, to choose a career that aligns with your goals, with your values, with your purpose. Are you just gonna go in every day, continue clocking in and taking money from your employer? Well, yes, you're trading your time, so but getting a pay paycheck for what? When you're not happy, all right? You deserve better than that, but it's going to take confidence to you to make the necessary changes if you're not one of the very few happy people. Um, in the workplace, all right? So think it through and make those necessary changes. Thanks so much for your time. Make it a wonderful day.